episode of Learn with Trithi. This is the fifth episode of the series, a complete Figma guide for prototyping for advanced UI and UX designers. In this particular episode, I will cover colors and other effects that you can use in your prototype masterpieces. So, without much ado, let's get started. But before we deep dive, kindly like, share and comment on this video if you find this extremely important for your upcoming projects. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of our upcoming updates. Let's get started. So as soon as you open Figma, I've already covered in my previous video, in my previous episode, I've already explained the tools to you. Now is the time to check how you can use colors, gradients and other effects in your amazing prototypes. So let us first do the first click on the frame and as a main unit let's drag a frame on screen. I'm not going into the detail of the size of the frame or anything. You can actually make it a bit larger also so that we can use the most of the screen size. Let us create some shapes. I have already showed you the different shapes that we can create in my previous video. So let us just press shift and drag a square. Let us press shift and draw a circle, same size. And let us also draw a triangle. So we will be having pretty much three different shapes. Perfect. By default, if you see that we have already started with the color. Why? Because it has come up with a default gray color, which is C4, C4, C4. That is the default color of Figma uh, colors. So now, as you know, I can just click on any one of the shape and I can simply change the colors. It is that simple. Lovely. Now, let us go to the next step where I will convert this particular color into a gradient. But don't you think that you don't have any gradient or vignette um, element in the property bar? Worry not. You just have to click this plus sign. As you click the plus sign, you will see that there is a something called linear has come over here. What is this linear? Let's click on it. This is nothing but a linear gradient that has already been applied to the base color that we had chosen. So what is the uh, linear gradient color? By default, it has given a white color at the top and the same white but in a transparency mode that they have applied over here. So this is a transparent part of the color. So how do I how do I uh, change the transparency? I just have to drag this opacity uh, slider over here. So you can see that the transparency already gets affected. So say for example, I want to just have a darker shade of red at the top. I will just have it like this. And maybe over here, I want to have a more darker shade of red towards the black. See how easily I could create a a gradient over my existing color. So I don't require the back color so I can just turn off the eye. So your gradient is ready. You can also move this gradient this way at an angle so that your gradient angle can also change. Pretty simple right? That's the power of using a gradient. Uh, you can also just click on by the way you have to close this 
box to start with another gradient for another shape. You can also um, change this particular thing. You can just first click on a particular gradient and just delete this particular shape at the, at the uh, bottom of your gradient. So over here you already have a linear transparent gradient by default. Now I want to create a circular gradient. What I should do? I should click on the linear tab over here and click uh, radial over here. You cannot see anything over here, right? Very, very easy to create now. I can just go and choose my first color. I choose my first color like this, a lighter shade of the yellowish orange. I will go to the next one where the transparency is there. I will take the transparency back to 100% opacity and I will choose the second color. Perfect. Your um, radial gradient is ready. You can, however, change the source of the radial gradient like this lovely right so your gradient also change and if you reduce the distance between the source and the target or the two colors you will have different types of gradient as per your wish for our sake we will keep the gradient uh, source point or the first color at the center of the screen Awesome. Again, I close this particular uh, box to literally close this particular gradient. Now comes the last uh, shape where we will try something else. So we will just create another slot as usual, delete the lower part of the color. So the base color is gone and I only have a linear gradient at the top. So by default, I will click on linear, I will go to the linear and I can take up anything what I require. I can just go for an angular um, gradient. Okay, I take two colors. Let's see what happens. I will check a very basic green. See the amazing metallic color that this particular gradient gives you i will go to the second color as usual i will turn the opacity to 100 percent and take a darker shade of uh, the same green and here's our angular gradient that we have created seamlessly perfect uh, another thing however i wanted to show you um, what is this small droplet of water tool that we can see over here so basically it is a blend mode these are the same type of blend modes that you can see in our photoshop as well darken multiply color burn light uh, lighten screen color dodge overlay soft light hard light and so on and so forth what exactly it does it is uh, let us see it so let us create another tab over here and let us also um, check and I bring it down in the lower uh, part of the thing and over here I will take say a solid color let's check and I will take a say a reddish sort of tinge over here okay great <clears throat> I will go to this angular and from here if I check different modes of color see how your color of the triangle changes so i can go from multiply you can understand when you are multiplying a base red color with a green color obviously the color changes to uh, a gray to darker black we can also go for hard light we can also go for overlays which I have already shown, screen and all this color tone we can actually check. Lovely. So we have also covered the blend mode. Let us now go to the next one. Let us for that let me again take a rectangle box, a smaller one. 
perfect and by default i will change the color to a basic red or say a pinkish shade okay now uh, the first thing i can do is create a stroke see as soon as i click on the stroke i have a one pixel basic black color stroke which is 000000 color stroke that has come all around the shape i will go over here and i can actually increase or decrease the line size lovely right so you have a stroke around okay if i click on this plus what happens you can have different types of linear gradient stroke that or a circular gradient stroke or radial gradient stroke over here so you can experiment with that i will not cover each and every part of the tool okay but you can always try out what is uh, as per your design style okay so great so now the last part which i wanted to show you is the effects as soon as i click on the effects what happens see the basic drop shadow has already come over here see if you can see over here that the i am just zooming the screen you can see the drop shadow over here okay you just need to now click on the effect setting you can see this uh, light burst sort of icon that is over there you can click on that and you can actually edit your drop shadow so say for example now i say that let's do a 12 by 12 um in the x and y axis what happens it actually moves your um, shadow to a 12 pixel by 12 pixel from the origin point we click on the um, burst again and we can actually also if i just drag my mouse pointer over the spread i can actually control the spread of my shadow okay and similarly if i drag around the blur i can control the blur as well so using this particular thing you can do so many things uh, with your design so that's that's the easiest part of creating effects with a uh, with figma you can also try let me try this thing uh, but before that i will just delete the stroke over here so that you can see the effect so i click on this uh, drop shadow and i check the inner shadow the inner shadow immediately takes the default uh, shadow uh, that i have already set that is 12 pixel by 12 pixel and creates a inner shadow over here if you if we would have Uh, taken a different layer then i could have also had the um, drop shadow as well as the inner shadow okay similarly you can also click on this inner shadow and you can check the layer blur what happens in the layer bl blur let's check this thing i create a layer blur and if you see like a gaussian blur the particular shape has already got a blur edge again by clicking on this you can actually adjust the blurriness of the layer so that's that's pretty simple and again what you can do you can also do a background blur let's see how background blur works so currently you are seeing nothing over here let us now check another ellipse shape and i create it create a overlap over here and right click and i would put it send backward okay so now i click over here and i press background blur okay also what i will do i will reduce the opacity of this particular layer now see amazing right so wherever this two particular image has overlapped you see the area is totally blurred so now you can do this thing with a lovely mix match of colors say for example you take a yellow over here you see 
that this particular area where these two colors are overlapping you have a fantastic blur effect which looks more like a uh, glass effect i will cover glass morphism in a new video sometimes very soon watch that space you will definitely know how you can create fantastic glass morphism which is a rage in today's world in the ux ui fraternity okay so see wherever i am moving this top layer the below layer wherever it is interacting or is actually interfacing with the top shape it is getting blurred okay so this is a fantastic thing that you can use in your prototype and um, you can also select the images like this and you can also export them as pngs that is a fantastic thing that you can do also remember um, which i do uh, generally i name each and every layer because when you are doing a complex project and you are not naming any one of the layers it might get extremely complicated when you are about to uh, complete the project and you will never know that where you have done drawn a particular shape or color so that's all folks for today's uh, this particular episode i will be back very soon with the grids and the guides which is extremely important when you start a prototyping project till we meet again goodbye and god bless and please 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 like share and comment on this video and do subscribe to the channel if you are new to this channel because if you hit the bell icon you will get all the notifications of our upcoming updates goodbye